Hey guys, welcome back to part two of answering all your questions that you ask me. I always try to look at the camera, but sometimes my eyes creep up. If I do that, I'm sorry. Some of you guys leave me not so nice comments on that and I'm doing the best I can. I am human after all over here. My name is Erin. I am the creator and founder of My Level 10 Life over here on YouTube. You can also follow me over on Instagram for day-to-day -day life things. And today I'm gonna to be answering four of your questions. These are really good questions and I hope that these questions can help you on your journey. Um, the first question is, how do you feel full after you've had gastric sleeve? Are there signals your body gives you? Oh yes, oh yes, there are signals your body gives you. And usually you'll only overeat once or twice because it's a very uncomfortable feeling and I've only done it a few times and I'm like, nope, never doing that again. And I literally will be eating dinner and have to like put my fork down and like I'm done. And I always make a funny face, I think, because my husband laughs at me every time I do it. He's like, are you full? <laughs> yes. And it just, I don't know how to describe it other than my belly just feels very full. And I'm like, and we're done. And that is something that I practice every day feeling, listening for, and just being very intuitive and mindful of because I don't want to get sick and I don't want to feel terrible and I want to nourish my body but I want to do it in a healthy way where I'm not feeling like a dumpster afterwards if that makes any sense. So you definitely feel full, your body feels full. Sometimes people will hiccup, that feels weird, um, that's a thing though. Um, sometimes your nose will run, weirdly. Um, there's a lot of signals I think your body will give you if you listen. And when you're really using food to nourish yourself and feel good and have energy, you will feel those things and, and notice those things. But when we're mindlessly eating to block out an emotion or cope with an emotion, we often don't hear those cues because we're just so focused on not feeling. So when you eat and focus on feeling, it's a completely different ball game. And that's something I've worked really, really hard on for the past three years and will continue to work hard on for the rest of my life. The next question is, how do you deal with shaming at work? So this has happened a lot where people have talked about this in my private group and on YouTube where they will have uh, weight loss surgery and then people at work will shame them for having the surgery or feel like their body is up for discussion because they had surgery. And that's just simply not true. And it's really not fair either. Just because someone decided to have bariatric surgery doesn't put them on the table for discussion like they are a prized possession or cash cow or whatever. I just feel like it's so bizarre to me that people think that discussing someone's body is an okay move. And I mean, maybe I'm just a jerk, but if people, I don't think people would do that in front of me because I would probably, they'd probably be terrified because I'd be like, why would you talk about my body? Why are you, what is wrong with all of you? I would literally look at every single one of them and be like, what is wrong with you? I don't know that I would have done that right after I had bariatric surgery because guys, I was a completely different person back then. My self-esteem was in the toilet and now my self-esteem is pretty strong and I just look at people now and I'm like, why would you do that? Why? Who did this to you? What is wrong with you? Who made you think that it was okay to show up and discuss my body here at a round table discussion like I'm a piece of meat? Get out. I mean, I would probably have jobs. I would have like, HR would be like, and we're not playing with her anymore because she's crazy and she'll report all of you. I'm just not putting up with that crap and I don't think you should either. If you're working in a place where people aren't treating you well and they're discussing your body and not being respectful of you, you need to you need to take action. You need to let them know verbally and professionally, or my favorite thing is to do it in writing and send an email to the person and say, hey, this happened, I'm not okay with this. This is like, I'm just letting you know that if this continues, I'm gonna have to take further action because this isn't okay. And if they're a good person and they really didn't mean, they'll say they're sorry and they'll move on. But if they're a jerk, they'll continue and then you'll have to take action. But honestly, I just don't put up with people's crap anymore, period. I mean, I'm on another level with that now. I mean, even on YouTube here, when people leave me a negative comment, I'm like, 
I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Goodbye. <laughs> I just, I have way too many other things that I'm chasing after to deal with, you know, dumb people. The next question is, my dietitian and family are upset at me for not losing and having stalls. What do I do? So my dietitian and family are upset at me for not losing weight and having stalls. What do I do? Okay, first of all, I don't even know where to begin with this question. I'm gonna have to take a deep breath for a minute. Okay, because I kind of want to go mama bear on your dietitian and your family. I'm gonna dial it in here for a second. First of all, this is your body, your choice, okay? Your body, your choice. And unless you're 12, which I'm guessing you're not, you're probably like my age and you're a grown woman or a grown man and you are making grown up decisions and you are responsible for your body. Um, wow. Um, first of all, no one has a right to be upset about your journey. And I think when I read this comment, this person was like just a few months out. So it wasn't like they were five years out and regained 200 pounds. Okay, this was, if I'm, if I'm remembering right, this person was not experiencing the level of weight loss that other people thought that person should have had and had stalls. First thing you need to know, I'm not an expert. I've just done this and I've worked with lots of people and I love this community so much. My heart is so, big for our bariatric community you have no idea and the first thing you need to know too is that we are not all the same you cannot compare an apple to an orange we are all on different parts of this journey and my weight loss your weight loss all of our weight loss are completely different things so how i lost how you lost the rate we lose how much we lose a month listen we are not calibrated robots we cannot lose weight at the same speed. We are humans with bodies that are not robots. We are gonna lose in different rates and different things. We're eating different things. We have different pasts. We have different genetics. We have different environmental factors. So much comes into play with this. Now, your family, they don't get to have a decision. If they're upset, you can tell them to go take a hike and email their complaints to idonotcare.org because my family does not get to have a decision on my body. None of them, not even one of them. And not my husband, not my mom, not my sisters, not anyone. Not anyone gets to have be upset about my body. Get out. You should be upset that, if anything, you were brave enough to have bariatric surgery and chase this and take care of your body and get healthier. They should be proud, every step of the way proud. And when I w thought I was stalling and wasn't losing fast enough because I was a slow loser, I lost like eight pounds a month on average. That's not that fast, you guys. And so many of you say to me, I lost 24 pounds in two months, it's not enough. Get out, that's more than I lost. You are doing amazing. And I said to myself early on when I started stalling, I didn't care if I lost five pounds a month, eight pounds a month, slow and steady wins the race. And this was my race not your dietitian's race, not your family's race, your race. And every day that I wasn't 300 pounds was a good day. And every day that I was moving in the right direction was a good day. And even days when I wasn't moving in the right direction, I just pivoted and got right for me. Not my family, not my dietitian for me. And most dietitians, well, a lot of dietitians haven't had bariatric surgery, but they have training and I think nutritionists are amazing, but a lot of them have no idea what food addiction feels like, what, and some do. And if you find one, they're a gem, you just, they're worth every penny. They're worth their weight in gold. But if, if you find one that doesn't mesh with you and acts disappointed or upset, it's time to find a new one. And go ahead and find you a new dietitian because that one isn't gonna help you, period. And you can send her this video and then you can send her to me and my emails down below. I will happily discuss this with her or him because no one should be upset with you unless you're gaining hundreds of pounds back and killing yourself with food. You're doing the best you can and maybe they should try helping you instead of being upset with you and your family, get out of here. Unless your family is your dietitian, 
get out of here. They have no opinion. Um, I'm proud of you. Maybe you needed to hear that. And this group, this community, we're proud of you. Not everyone can do bariatric surgery. Not everyone is strong enough. It's hard. And you did it. And you're doing it. And I'm really proud of you. So if you have someone in your life that's upset because they think you're not doing good enough, it's time to find a new group. For real. It's time to find a new dietitian. I don't care if you gotta go online and find one. I don't care if you need to get books and learn it yourself. I don't care. I would rather you do that than not be shamed for not operating at a robot pace. You're a human and we're all calibrated differently. And so the most important thing is that you don't give up and every day you make choices to live your level 10 healthy life, not your level two, your 10. And that means showing up for you, eating healthy for you, drinking your water for you, moving your body for you. I believe in you and I know you can do that. So that was a really long answer to that question, but it really fired me up. I'm sorry. I just, I hate when people get disappointed at people. It's like, get out of here. Like, you know, if they were a recovering alcoholic, would they be shaming them and saying, I'm just really disappointed that you're, you're taking your time at this sobriety thing and it's only been 20 days and not 30. You can't rush time, you can't rush the clock. And this is a lifetime journey of getting healthy. I'm just beginning. I'm three years in, but I'm just beginning. Can you believe that? I mean, I'm still gonna do major things with this body and major milestones and major healthy things. I have so many goals, you guys, they're insane. I tell my husband sometimes and he's like, I'm just not really worried that you're not gonna do these things. I just know you're going to do these things because I'm never giving up. And I don't think you should either. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the next one, bye.